Don't let your high and mighty ways turn your head. Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. <clears throat> As you can see, I whacked my hair off. I cut it real short. Anyway, <laughs> yes, I had to kiss all those little strings goodbye. But what I want to talk about to you about is some of the things we have to cut away out of our lives. Now, you ever hear the old expression, every goodbye ain't gone? <clears throat> yeah. Well, there are things that we think are gone in our lives. We think they're buried, they're, they're dead, they're history. But I think one of the scariest things we could experience is if we walk into a graveyard and we walk up to a tombstone and that dirt starts to rumble and a door pops open and up sits a dead body. You be right. <laughs> that would scare the boo-boo out of you, wouldn't it? Well, <laughs> well, listen. This is what I want you to think about. All right. Imagine you think that all the things that you've dealt with are dead and gone. They're totally kapui. They're history. They're, they're, they're non-existent in your life. And you think everything is okay and you're doing okay, and you're seeking the Lord with all your heart, and you and God just got it going on. Your relationship with the Lord is strong, and ha, it couldn't be any better. And then up jumps Jack out the box, or Jack Arena, if you're a female. And you're sitting there thinking, where did that come from? It's almost as embarrassing in hindsight, as when you walk out of a restroom and there's a long string of toilet paper hanging on the back of your shoe and you think you're looking fine as wine in the summertime and everybody's, <coughs> and you don't even know it, but you're strutting, baby. You got that swagger going, switching those hips, you know, whatever you're doing, you got it going on till you look down and realize you've been trailing something behind you. Well, too late to be embarrassed. Everybody's seen it. Well, it's the same way with our attitudes and our emotional dispositions. Yes. We tend to think that we're okay. That we're doing well in the Lord. We're reading our Bible. We are really living a holy life. We're not committing fornication. We don't get high anymore. We don't drink and get drunk anymore. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. We're not gambling anymore. We got delivered from a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. But then somebody does something on the road or you're on your way to church or prayer meeting or Bible study or maybe even choir rehearsal. And they cut you off one time too many, and you are ready to give them the finger and tell them off and wind your window down and give them an earful. <clears throat> and then after you've done so, oops, yeah. See, we all fall short of the glory of God. So the Bible says, those that think they stand, Take heed lest you fall. Don't get too high and mighty in your mind. Don't think too highly of yourselves. Be very careful about that. Because see, sometimes we can fall into what the Bible refers to. It describes what we would call religious pride. And we end up getting this righteous indignation. When it comes to other people's flaws, faults, and sinful ways and shortcomings. But when it comes to us, God is good. And we think we are too. But we're not. So, as the kids say, don't get it twisted. You're not the good that's in your life. God is the good. You are the recipient of that good. And remember... But for the grace of God, there go I. But for the grace of God, I be a fool. But for the grace of God, I show my nasty behind. But for the grace of God, I act a plumdy idiot. 
You have to remember that with all the goodness you think you have attained down through the months and years, it is but for the grace of God that you got it. So make sure that you lean on the grace of God to maintain it. Climb and maintain. I love that expression. You have to maintain. And the way you maintain is through prayer, humility, an attitude of gratitude, an attitude of humility. You have to kick that pride to the side. Mm -hmm. Because if you nurture those negative attributes and you think you have a right to feel more superior to the other person in your church, you have a right to feel superior to the unsaved. Remember, you are just a sinner forgiven. That's the only difference. When I used to minister at prison ministry, I used to tell them the only difference between you and me is I didn't get caught. That's the only difference. That's it. I didn't get caught. When God warned me, I took heed. Even though I was unsaved, God warned me. Better stop it. If you don't stop right now, you're going to do time. Now, my question to you is, are you taking inventory of who you are and who you're not? Are you humbling yourself in the sight of the Lord so he can raise you up? Are you being honest about what's working and what's not working in your life? Are you asking God humbly for help? Do you genuinely try when he gives you the help? Hmm. Because a lot of times we allow things in our own lives that we would never tolerate in someone else's. If someone else's, well, you know, you, you ever see hairdressers at a hair salon and you go in with hair down your, down, I mean, down your sides. I mean, it's almost touching your waist. And you tell them you want a trim, a one inch trim. And they go in and they pull that hair down and they pull it down and you think, oh, they're doing a good job. Next thing you know, you get through and you end up with nubs up here and you're, you, you're devastated. Why? Because the hairdresser, <laughs> some hairdressers cut because they don't like the fact that you have what they don't have. Other hairdressers could care less about hair. So hint. Don't go to a short hair hairdresser if you got long hair and you want to keep it long because they don't care about hair. They'll whack it in a minute. Go to a long hair person. But here's the point. There are some hairdressers that really care about your hair. And they may, you may want your hair to stay down here. And they may say, no, we need to come up here. Now, you don't like it. But what they're looking at they're combing through and they can see where all the split ends are. And they know if they don't cut it, your hair is going to cut itself. Mm -hmm. So there are times when God tells you, you need a cut. Sit in my chair and I'll whack it off because you don't need that anymore. Jesus said in the Bible, if your eye offend you, pluck it out. If your hand offend you, cut it off. Now, he wasn't talking literally. It's a figurative statement that means whatever is tripping you up in your life needs to go. But see, we go into denial when we look at our own faults. Well, God understands. I don't mean any harm. Oh, but you're doing harm. You may not mean it, but it doesn't mean, uh, what's the expression they say now? The, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So you have to be careful not to get so high and mighty about how wonderful you are and how horrible and how, how others fall short of the glory of God, how, uh, how disappointing others are. 
Be very careful about that. Be careful about religious judgmentalism, constantly judging other religions. Now, many of us look at, I'm talking all over the place, so I hope I'm making a point. Many of us look at, at uh, Jehovah's Witnesses and say, gone, nothing but a cult. But would you believe there are some really godly people, born again, spirit filled people in that movement? They haven't quite seen the light or God has allowed them to remain because he's sustaining them on a personal level while he's trying to get them to infiltrate and open the eyes of the blind. Hmm. Never wipe out anything. Never cross anything completely off your list with that high and mighty attitude. Because God may, here's the warning, God may have to bring you down a few notches. Hmm. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Now, I'm not going to mention names because I'm not into rubbing history in people's faces. But you remember a famous evangelist that was always preaching fire and brimstone on sexual sin. Oh, my goodness. His tolerance level was. And I am telling you. When it comes to how hard he used to preach, and I mean this man preached hard, he literally preached fire and brimstone on those kind of sins. No room, no room for error, no room for discussion. Hmm, right. Well, let me tell you, he came down so hard God had to come down hard on him and embarrassed him in front of all the world on the media. The very sin he crushed under his very feet, under his weighty words and his eloquent speeches was the very sin that brought him down. He fell into the very hole that he tried to cover up. Always be careful about what you won't tolerate in someone else. Always be careful about that. That's something we have a, a very bad thing, with, especially when it comes to denominationalism and religion. Religion. Yeah, we have a bad case of that. We have a very bad case of wearing the judge's robe and, and hitting that anvil on the desk saying, no, you don't count. You don't agree with me, so you don't count. You have no ability to put a person in heaven or knock a person down in hell. But God has the ability to do it all with you and me. So be careful. Because you, I remember a woman told me this story years ago. This is just a little insight to think about, a little food for thought. I remember this lady told me years ago, she said that she used to look at people in church and she would think, now what, they must have done something wrong. What were they doing wrong for their child to end up a drug addict like that? What were they doing wrong for their child to end up doing time, doing such stupid crimes? How could they get caught up? They were bringing them to church. Well, something must not be happening right at home. And she was very intolerant, very self-righteous, very indignant about it until her son got caught up in drugs and her son did time in jail. That brought her down a few notches. And all of a sudden, her understanding of the dilemma manifested because of what she had to go through. Because of her own pain, now she could relate to someone else's. And she realized it's not mommy's fault or daddy's fault. It's that person's choice. And life happens to people. And some people are not very good with pain management. And they don't know they can go to God and get the pain taken out. So she learned to shut her mouth and pray for the people instead of judging the people. And I ask you, do the same. Pray for them. Don't look at them out the corner of your eye and scratch them off your list. 